Okay, now we go to the main topic of today's webinar session, and this is the um, hospital and the medical um, industry. Um, I spent a lot of time um, trying to organize this very slide for you to appreciate the CSSD workflow. Um, CSSD, by the way, stands for Central Sterile Services Department. In some other places in our countries, they are called the Sterile Products Department. Um, but globally, they are well known, commonly called CSSD. So we start from the very start here, the left um, side of the slide, from the bulk supplies of the hospital, which is a general store, then the wards and units, which is the operating theaters, the patient rooms, the wards and units. Um, what we collect here is from the general store, the clean receipt, then from the wards or from the operations, the dirty receipt. We collect them and we disassemble them. All right. So from the general stores um, where we supply the needs of the hospitals with like cotton, cause, and the other instruments such as gloves, rubber wares, um, surgical instruments, um, mentioning that, and this is where actually the washer and disinfector is. And this is where we can provide solutions um, because washer and disinfectors in the CSSD is a very critical process that must be measured and that must be verified and qualified. So one, when all is this, uh, all of this is done, then they go to the assembly area because they have to pack um, all instruments under similar categories, the gloves um, and the other PPEs, the power rubber wares and other accessories. Then after assembly, they go to a very careful inspection and um, in the inspection they check for like um, damages in the packaging um, like leaks in the tubes some very obvious dirts and other things then after it has passed the inspection area it goes to the press serial or press sterile storage. It stays there until they need a demand or they need a su to supply a demand for an operation in the medical or hospital operations. But before doing that, they go into the process of sterilization. And then this will be elaborated on the succeeding slides. And after a sterilization process, they go to sterile storage and to distribution. So typically this is how the CSST workflow looks like. Um, not actually looks like, but it's actually an SOP. So since we mentioned about two key applications or programs, which is cleaning and disinfection and sterilization. We'll try to elaborate more on these two um, subjects. Um, this is where we can provide the EBRO solutions. Number one, in the cleaning and disinfection. Um, what do we try to process here are the reusable medical tools or equipment, the stainless steel surgical and operation instrumentations, um, accessories that are important to um, operations like catheters, intravenous pumps and crash carts, 
And the main target here is actually the endoscopes, you know, the bacteriological surveillance because it goes inside the human body and um, other contaminations. I did not elaborate more on, on the main target, but when you are talking about cleaning and disinfection and in also uh, sterilization, uh, we are categorizing three uh, different kinds of um, materials in the hospitals. The less critical, not critical, the less critical or medium critic, critical and the critical. Um, and these three categories are processed according to how they are so supposed to be disinfected and sterilized. Now in sterilization, um, this is actually referring to critical items such as any instruments which are introduced into a human bloodstream or the human body. And the main target um, is obviously all living and active organisms and microorganisms. Why do we do all this? Um, you know, Ivan from Ebro, um, he's actually like a, one of the disciples of the CSST operations, um, mentioning about um, the organizations that are very active in the hospital operations, but it is not the same with all countries or all the rest of the countries in the world, um, but we are regulated. Um, this is for sure. And the standards could be the law of medical products, um, the medical products operator ordinance social law, and the hygiene requirements for conditioning medical products. The standards and the norms circles around these three. Um, and uh, I don't think it will be good for one hospital in one country not to observe any of this or not even wanted this. So the validation of processes in the conditioning of medi medical products is of course legally binding. Um, let me tell you, because we are referring to medical and hospitals, let me explain to you a little bit about two things, the validation and the root routine monitoring, because in the hospitals, both are very critical and important. Well, the validation is normally referring to almost the new equipment or new machineries that are used in the hospitals or in the CSSD, but not only the new ones, but also those that are repaired, adjusted, or recalibrated. So validation involves IQ, OQ, and PQ, which are the essentials of validation. Um, it's a complete presentation and verification of facts that produces and processes equipment, materials, process steps, everything that is concerning an important process or machinery. Um, an IQ, OQ, PQ is very essential. And um, this is co um, completed with documentation as a summary that presented in details, details in a validation report. So basically that's validation. And we have been talking about validation since a um, um, couple of years ago. And I'm, I'm very sure that most of you understand um, this validation concept now. But not, of you, not all of you knows about routine control which is different with validation. This is more frequent. This process is actually a, a series of periodic verifications to check if everything were, is working, not only with the washer disinfectors and sterilizers, and I mean the autoclaves, but also the different machineries in the, in the CSSC and the, in the hospital. The frequency of performing routine controls depends on the machineries and the processes which are solely on the responsibility of the assigned operator and the managers. We have all the solutions for all that we have talked about um, in the succeeding slides. 
um, we have the most suitable data loggers for, for this application, for the washer and disinfection, and also for sterilization. Um, and actually the most practical configuration. Instead of buying four loggers for one measuring point to be placed and fixed in their correct locations, Ebro can provide you with only one logger, but with long, um, flexible thermo um, PT1000 sensors, such as this picture on your rep, uh, right. And we also have, um, as an option, the mini loggers, the EBI-11. The conductivity logger, which is very important for washer disinfection processes, um, it is a good trend that we started with Ebro, um, and I think it is being copied now by some of the competition, but we are faring very well. We have the pressure sensors with temperature sensors and the Bowie and Dick test um, logger. So this is a good alternative for your chemical indicators um, for your Bowie and Dick procedures for autoclaves. And it is certified according to ISO 11140-4 by an independent laboratory. So the Bowie and Dick test logger, the EBI-16, is simulating not only the towel pad test in the autoclaves, but also the heat penetration test and the temperature measurement inside the chamber, and also the pressure measurements as converted into theoretical steam temperatures. So it's like a three-in-one or four-in-one data logger. Then I have this, um, mentioned there's some softwares that are very important for all those that we have talked about, um, the wind log validation and the wind log med. 